it's crunch time. It's essentially one game playoffs here for the Patriots the rest of the way, besides maybe next week against Jacksonville, which should be easy peasy to a degree. But this week against Buffalo, they can obviously wrap things up before that week 18 against Miami, but even seating wise, it feels like that game is going to matter in some capacity. So really we're, we're in the playoff mode already. It, it kind of feels like for the Patriots. Yeah, this is it. You know, when we talk about down the stretch, you know, down the stretch, this down the stretch that we've been talking about since March, they can draft a guy who can help them down the stretch here. We're at the stretch. This is the stretch. Yeah. There's no more down the stretch. There's just now. So I will say that Jackson games, Jacksonville game is looking a little trappy. Uh, I'm sure we'll get oh, to that not. next week. I'm not saying they're going to lose oh, or not. anything, but um, yeah, no, this is, this is it. This is, I, I had Mike Chiardi on my podcast on, on 98.5 sports hub.com on Wednesday. And we briefly talked about, you know, when's the last time there was a one o'clock game of this magnitude? Yeah. Right. It would have to be pre pre flex because normally this game gets moved. I'm frankly shocked. It didn't get moved. Yeah. Um, and this is hands down, and I and I, I put this caveat on it before. I count the Bucks game as its own thing. Yeah. That's that's not included in this. This is the biggest game of the post Brady era in New England, because the Bucks game was like that was about that wasn't about football right. directly. Like that game ultimately meant nothing. It was a Week Four game against an NFC team. This is essentially a division championship. I compare this game. This game to me feels like a college football, like, like there's college football atmosphere around this um, where you have a true rivalry, a rivalry that's building um, you're, you're, you know, you know, you're playing for the division, but you're also realistically playing for a lot more, right? Like when Michigan and Ohio state met a couple of weeks ago back then. So I love the atmosphere around this game. And then it's Christmas week and, and you know, they're coming off a Saturday game and everything's just so weird. Uh, it's, it's awesome. And yeah, I know I said that week 13, that, you know, this game hadn't happened yet. That was the <laughs> biggest game of the post Brady era. I think maybe yeah, we've yeah. gone a little over the top with it, you know, but it, it really has felt each week. Like, like the games are building in significance. I promise you, we will not be saying that next week. If, if I say next week that it's the biggest game of the post Brady era, Evan, Evan can hit me with a shoe and we'll put it on Twitter or something. Okay. Uh, this is, this is unless Miami becomes winning in, this should be, the biggest regular season game of the post Brady era for some time. Yeah. And I think the interesting thing apart about it is, is that the path for the Patriots or the bills to win the division, if they lose this game is basically non-existent, right? So right. week 13 Buffalo loses that game. There's still some time to make up some ground. And here we are in week 16. And if they win this game in new England, then they do have a really solid chance in the inside track on winning the AFC East. So this is, like you said, it's a conference title game. It's the SEC championship. It's that type of atmosphere because 99% chance, I think, is what Football Outsiders puts it at, that the team that wins this game is going to win the AFC East. That, that's what we're looking at right now uh, in terms of win probabilities and stuff like that. So that's the magnitude of the game. We know how big of a game this is for the Patriots. Everything that's built up to this point with this season and the Mac Jones draft pick, not that obviously we have a long way to go with Mac and, and year one is not, not it right. There's a whole, right. a whole window here with Mac Jones, at least four years, if not more. But the problem that, or the thing is, is that makes it such a big game and, and such a big magnitude is that they have made in such a short period of time, they have made so much progress with this team to get to nine and five and to get into this position, to go on the seven game winning streak, to have the off season that they had, not only in the draft, but also in free agency and truly rebuild this team in an expedited way in one off season to put itself back in the top of the AFC East and potentially the AFC as a conference in general, it would feel very deflating for them to go ahead and with a two game lead in the division from week 13's win in, in Monday night in Buffalo to then lose the division at the end of the season, they'll bounce back from it. I'm not saying it's going to bury Mac Jones for the rest of his career. And it's all over at that point, but it would be very deflating to make all that progress so quickly and have it all come crashing down. I think it's going to create this interesting dynamic and I'm not the first person to make this comparison, right? Matt Dolph, Ty Anderson, who I work with at 98 five, they've been on this for weeks. It's going to kind of create, the dynamic you have around Tuka Rask, where to get it, like sort of, not exactly, 
But to get to this point, as impressive as it is, and, you know, we have to see how the game plays out too. Like, I don't know that they're necessarily going to fall short because of Mac. It's going to fall on him. And I think you'll also get this interesting dichotomy of, you know, is it a disappointment? And I think in the micro it is because they had the division in hand and then to fall apart, like if they lose, but at the same time, I'll go back to something I've said since training camp. This is essentially one long preseason. They're in a three to four year win. And I'm saying this now so that after the game, I don't sound like I'm making excuses. They're essentially in a three to four year window with the way they drafted the guys they signed. If this is the start, right? If the, if, if the foundation they build is 10, 11 wins, And they're only, and I really think they're only going up from there. Like, I think this is the worst iteration we will see of this Patriots core. I truly believe that whether they're together for three or four years, I think this is the worst, this iteration of this Patriots core will play. So if they leave that, that foundation at 10 wins, that's impressive. But at the same time, yeah, it is going to be, you know, they left something on the table. And I think the story of this season, unless they win the Super Bowl, the story of this season you, we won't be able to tell it at the end of the season. I think it will be three, four, five years down the line. We'll have a better idea because, you know, if they go on and they win a Super Bowl in 2022 or 2023, 2021 becomes that foundation. It becomes the year they built all of it, right? We, we hear people who are on the 2001 Patriots talk about, even though the ending was disappointing, 11 losses, how important that 2000 season was and how much they learned. Even um, predating that, the the Parcells Carroll year. Or even, the- yeah establishing Ty Law and Lawyer Malloy and Teddy Bruce so, and Willie McGinnis. Yeah. I think this year has that kind of potential at the same time. If this core never gets one, then, and look, we're, we're going way further down the road than we need to for this week, but I just want to yeah. set the stage before we get to the game, before the narrative is already set. Um, you know, if they don't win one after this, then it kind of becomes, well, was this their best chance? I don't think it will be, but I expect people to say that. Okay, so let's get into the actual matchup. That's enough of the big picture uh, outlook in this game and in the Patriots rebuild and everything in general. Let's get into the matchups. And I think the one theme of the week, uh, one more abstract thought here before we truly get into the X's and O's and the nitty gritty is the weather, obviously, right? The last time out, it was a complete windstorm nor'easter type conditions up in buffalo it was a disaster of a weather game it affected both sides it affected the kicking game we've talked to the patriots players all week long even bill belichick and josh mcdaniels talking about how this is truly going to be a different game it's going to take on a different form and my question that i want to pose to you alex is how concerned are you that this is going to be a little bit more of an open game and there's going to be a little bit more on the passing game emphasis for on both directions right josh allen's going to have better conditions to throw in matt jones is going to have better conditions to throw in but there's going to be more on the patriots pass defenses play and more on mac jones and the patriots pass offenses play and they're not going to be able to win this game like it's 1937 again they're not going to be able to win it running the ball 45 times and only throwing three. They might win it running 45 times and throwing it 15, right? I'm not saying right. that they that they don't well, they can't do that, but I, they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more than they did last time. That's for sure. Yeah, but if they run 60 offensive plays, something either went horribly right or horribly wrong. Um, right. I will say, everybody's talking about, you know, no weather, no weather. It, there is some weather for this game. I'm looking yeah, at the forecast I mean, it's right December now. in Foxborough, so it's not perfect. That's for sure supposed to snow Friday and Saturday, and then there's going to be freezing rain Sunday morning. And look, that's not 50 mile an hour winds, but that's not nothing either. And we talked about after that last game, how much better the Patriots adjusted to the weather. And again, it's not 50 mile an hour winds, but there still is going to be weather to adjust to. And we know the Patriots have the advantage there back to your original question. You know, how worried am I that the bills are able to move the, uh, the ball a little bit more? Um, I, I go back to what I said before that week 13 game. It all comes down to if the Patriots score first for me. I yeah. think because because first off, I think the Bills are I think the Bills took that loss very personally. And that's a double-edged sword. So, you know, on one hand, and in Patriots players have talked this up all week, like they're coming in with a purpose. They're coming in, they know exactly how close that last game was. They know that that necessarily wasn't a true reflection of them as a team, the bills, and, and they're coming with the purpose. The other side of that is, are they going to be too gassed up? 
are they going to try to prove things they don't need to prove? If the Patriots get up early and really put the pressure on them, and I, I, I don't remember if I talked about this on Tuesday or if I talked about it uh, you know, on the Sports Hub at some point, but basically all the pressure is on the Bills in this game. Going in, before anything starts, all the pressure is on the Bills. If you score first, they might get really sloppy because the Bills, as we've seen, are not built to play from behind. So the other, you know, the other side of that is if you let them get comfortable, well, now there's no other element that can snap them out of the game when they start to get in a rhythm. So I, I think the, the weather element or the lack thereof, like everything in this game is just compounded by who scores first. I think that's all that that's what this game entirely comes down to is who scores first. You know, maybe if there's a field goal, we'll call it the first touchdown. Right. Yeah. But I, both of these teams are built to play from ahead and it, you know, I think all these little elements can be used to either team's advantage if they get ahead like they want. I know yeah. that's a total cop out answer, but it's the no, right it's a, so I, I think it, it's kind of where I wanted to go with it, honestly, is because I, I, something that I've been working on and, and, and pulling stats for today is the idea that the Patriots' identity is to win in the trenches, right? To win, win in the line of scrimmage, where they still clearly have a very distinct advantage on Buffalo on both sides of the ball, especially even more so maybe now on defense because the Bills' offensive line is all sorts of banged up. They got guys on the COVID list. Deion Dawkins, their starting left tackle, who's their best offensive lineman, is still on the COVID list right now. Spencer Brown flipped over to left left tackle last week and was an absolute disaster. So they have a clear, distinct advantage in the trenches. And the two themes that you look at, the Patriots in their wins versus the Patriots in their losses have some really distinct trends of when this goes wrong, they lose the game. Or if this goes right, they win the game. The, the biggest thing is obviously first quarter point differential, right? When they get up to the a lead early and they can play from ahead and they can set the tone that way on the line of scrimmage, everything else falls into place. Now, in terms of the trenches, you look at their rushing success rate, for example, on offense, but also their rushing success rate in terms of stopping the run. All the five losses, other than the Dallas game, the other four one losses have something in common, and that is the opponent had a very efficient rushing attack against the Patriots in those games, and particularly at the end of the game, right? You have the Dolphins, you have New Orleans, and obviously Indianapolis closing out the game on the ground and closing right. out the game with their running game. Similarly, because they get behind in some of these games that they've lost and they have to throw their way back into the game, pressure starts to mount on Mac Jones. And I mean, literal pressure, like he's throwing more under pressure in those games, 35% pressure rate in the losses, 23% pressure rate in the wins. So you see a lot of kind of splits here where playing from ahead and being able to establish balance on offense and making the other team, the, uh, the opponent one dimensional, that's their formula. That's the way that they're going to win games all year long, no matter who they're, if it's Buffalo, if it's Tennessee, if it's Indianapolis, if it's Patrick Mahomes in Kansas city, if the Patriots can play well in the first quarter, allow themselves to run the ball for all four quarters and they stop the run and make the opponent one dimensional on the other side, they are winning all those games at a very high rate. So I think that that's the key in this game, regardless of the weather is still to stick to your core identity of being the stouter and tougher team on the line of scrimmage. That's where you have a distinct advantage against Buffalo. And that's where your advantage needs to be. Right. And you need to make sure that you dominate in that phase of the game. And I think you hit on it perfectly where it prevents them from being one dimensional, right? The Patriots, when they score first this year, they're five and one when they don't score first, they're four and four. Right. So it's, it, and it, it comes with the rookie quarterback. Like we talked about this going back to when Mac was named the starter. It just, it, if, if teams know he's going to throw, he hasn't faced, he really didn't face anything like that at Alabama. He just yeah. didn't. And it's not about, he's not good enough, right? It's not a matter of, Oh, Mac Jones can't do this. I like, I'm not saying he'll never be able to do it, but you just, there's things he's a rookie. There's going to be things he's never seen before. And I think, Once teams don't have to worry about the run, they can get into some really complicated coverages in the past. And it's just a learning experience for them. And it's a good learning experience. It absolutely is. But it's just the kind of thing where you always want to make life easier on your quarterback, regardless of it's rookie Mac Jones or peak Tom Brady. 
Yeah. And the way the Patriots are built just when they get behind and they have to chase points, it's not making things easy on the quarterback. Yeah, and they usually figure things out defensively, but then you also have that one drive in those three games I mentioned, the Dolphins, the Saints, and then last week against Indianapolis, it's one drive and that's all it takes, right? You can't stop the run on one drive. Week, it goes all the way back to week one when they had Miami backed up inside their own five yard line. They needed to get the, the stop to get the ball back to Mac Jones and Miami threw the ball once, but basically ran themselves off the line, right? And were right. able to then kneel, kneel out the clock. You look at New Orleans, same thing, 20 to 13 in that game. They ran the ball right down the field and scored a touchdown to make it 27 13 game over. Jonathan Taylor breaks off the 67 yarder game over. So at some point in time, what we're seeing with this defense is that the dam eventually has broken a late in the game after they adjust to the early, early game onslaught by a team, they figure it out. They level off. They are good for two and a half quarters, two quarters. And then by the midway through the fourth quarter, the dam has broken on the defense and that's, they're not giving Mac that opportunity to have that signature drive. He hasn't really gotten that signature drive put in his hands just yet. Truly, except against Houston, right? Well, against Houston. I would, I mean, what what's the touchdown throw to Kendrick Bourne against Dallas? So I guess that that, that was <laughs> close. if they win that game, right? But I think right. my my point is is that in Miami, New Orleans, and Indianapolis, and those three losses in particular, they had an opportunity to get him the ball back in a one score game, right? They they could right. have gotten the ball back to him at twenty to seventeen on Saturday night against the Colts, but the defense broke and they couldn't get the ball back to him and. At some point in time, hopefully we see that opportunity. That's I just I, I we everybody's out there, I think, in the narrative right now, Alex, is that Mac can't do it. And my argument would be that Mac really hasn't had the chance to do it, right? I mean, he's come close, but you also don't want your team to be down 20 points. So it, it's right. a double-edged sword. You don't want to have to make him mount the comeback, but he's mounted comebacks and they haven't exactly given him the opportunity of two minutes left down by three points you're starting at your at the 25 go on a drive right give right. us the game winning drive he he did in tampa against tampa i should say he got him into field goal range and not to not to bash nick folk it was a 55 yard field goal or whatever it was right. the field goal just doinks and doesn't go in and, and they miss that opportunity but that was the only time that they truly had a, a an opportunity to go ahead and, and PFR for pro football reference, they track those game winning drives. Right. Right. And, and right now Mac has won against Houston, but they haven't really given him that opportunity to get another one yet. See, I just, I, I don't believe that. I think that doubt, da- you know, the Dallas one was what would have been a game winning. Like we saw him in that setting. They didn't sure. ultimately win the game, but he doesn't know they're going to go on to lose it. Right. They, they gave it, they gave it, to be fair. They, they probably gave it to him more in overtime, honestly, like they had, and I'm not blaming him. Nelson Aguilar drops that ball and that right. kind of ruined that drive. But they, and if you want to talk about the Dallas game, they also did give him a chance in overtime. But again, that goes back to my point, like through no fault, of, he's been put in these situations and he's done all you can ask of them. They haven't turned into wins, but it's not his fault, right? The yeah. Dallas game, the Colts, like the Colts game. All right. He didn't get the final drive to tie the game up, but he brought, he got him back from down 20, yeah. like, you know, to within one score. We're not going to catch. Does only the last drive count in terms of can Mac Jones lead a team back, right? To get from down 21 to 14, that has nothing to do with Mac Jones. To get from down 14 to seven, that has nothing to do with Mac Jones. It's just the seven to the tie, right? Like that, that's why I'd push back on it. It's almost, you know, and the other thing I've seen anti Brady people use this seriously. I'm going to use it sarcastically. You know, if Mac Jones is so great, he shouldn't be leading fourth quarter game winning drives. If Mac Jones is so great, the Patriots should be comfortably ahead in the fourth quarter in every game. 